clarify the messaging on your website, turn visitors into customers. Um, there's a lot of content. Uh, I have over a hundred slides to go tonight. I mean, a lot of them I'm going to go, you know, throw it and everything. Um, we're going to be talking about how, why we redesign websites, you know, actually at the core. Um, how our brain works, the seven elements of a story, the uh, seven questions to ask when reviewing a website. We're going to talk about the grammar test. So I had a pushback one time. Someone said, "What do you, what do you call it? A grammar test? You know, what's wrong with grammars?" I'm like, "There's nothing wrong with grammar. You'll see." And <clears throat> the five key elements of a successful website. So there's. Uh, I know some of you are going to make some notes. I know even some of you are going to take pictures of the slides, and that's perfectly fine. But remember that I will. You will get a copy of all those slides uh, within the next couple of days. I will upload them on the meetup, so you'll get a PDF. And uh, so if you don't, you know, if the slide goes too fast, you'll get a copy of it. Okay. Uh, the entire content of this presentation is built on the book uh, by Don Miller, which is called Building a Story Brand. Uh, and I will give you some more information about Don Miller. So everything I'm talking about is bake, uh, based on this book that I uh, got about a year and a half ago, which is extraordinary and has transformed how I approach uh, building websites for my client as well as uh, my own websites. Uh, so you'll see it's really amazing content. Um, so the first thing what we do with marketing is we waste a lot of money on marketing. We waste a lot of money on websites. Um, and the reason why is because every time we build a website, for some reason or another, we get to a point where, well, we thought that was it, but it's not it. You know, we were trying to get more leads. Um, or we just thought that, well, the design is outdated, so if we redo the design, that's really going to fix, uh, the, that's going to do the trick. That is going to fix my website. Um, because basically, we don't have enough people coming to our website. It's like an, an empty mall. And really, really what we want is we want you know Black Friday. We want people to flock to our website, like knock on the door, fill out those forms, and for some reason or another, it's just not happening. So what we do is we hire a designer. It's a great designer um, that knows a lot about design. Uh, or we'll hire some geeks. You know, sometimes it's the kids, uh, kids are around the block or just some, some guys that know, oh, you know how to build websites. You build websites before, so we're going to hire you. You're just going to be the perfect person for us. Okay, and those people, by the way, have certifications. They have awards for design. Uh, they have, you know, all kinds of accreditation for, on, on, with what they're doing. So it's like, they must be good, right? They're going to do a great job for us. Um, and the designer, is going to build us what I call a pretty website, right? Because that's what designer do. Designer build pretty stuff, right? Uh, but for some reason, that just doesn't work. It doesn't work. It's a pretty website, but it's useless, right? But we love it, you know, because we're going to look at it, you know, over and over. We go back home, we refresh. Oh my God, look at that. It's so pretty. But it just simply, for some reason, after a while, you're going to realize that it doesn't work. Uh, and then the geeks, they're going to build really complicated uh, but useful stuff, right? It's got a lot of beats and fits and it just moves all over the place. And if you click here, it does that and all thing. And that again is not working. After a while, we realized that we've built that seven step survey and everything and no one, not one person is filling it out. Nobody cares. So that's pretty much the state of marketing. And we waste an enormous amount of money on that. Can anyone in the room relate to, what, to that? Right? Wasting a lot of money on marketing. We've all done it. I've done it. Even myself, a marketer, I have done it. <clears throat> so people buy things because the words they read get them to take action. Let me say that again. People buy things because the words they read gets them to take action. And what I mean by that is if you look at Amazon, probably I think it's the most successful e-commerce website in the world with Jeff Bezos being the first billionaire over a hundred billion dollar, it's probably one of the ugliest websites you've ever seen. Right? And yet we probably have all bought something on Amazon this week. 
We go. What do we do? We read the reviews. We read the description and we buy. How does that work? Right? Uh, so we actually built things like that. Like this website. This beauty. Right? Uh, that's what actually designer get, to get us to do. I don't know, it's probably a combination of the designer and then the owner of this website that said, why don't we do that because this is really beautiful. Right? I just want you to get that this website is a dentist website. What? I'm not kidding. This is a dentist website. Right? And that's what designers and that's what people do because they're so close to their own stuff. They can't even see how useless it is. Like what are you selling? Real estate? Vacation in Palm Beach? Like it makes no sense whatsoever. But we literally do that. Now, what we have done for ourselves, and maybe not as bad, uh, and I'm sure that this dentist has spent thousands of dollars on this beauty, uh, but this is what we do. It's because we're so close to it, we can't even see the, uh, the I'm gonna call it, I'm gonna use the S word, like the stupidity of it. Like how that, that, that doesn't work, okay? So again, people buy things because the word they read gets them to take action. There are two things, and there's a reason for that, because there's two things on how our brain works. And that is what we call the reptilian brain, our most primit primitive brain, is we thrive, number one, we thrive and survive. This is why we make eye contact to one another. We make sure you're not an enemy, you're like your friend, okay? Because in case someone comes in and attacked us, we can probably protect ourselves, right? And I just want to make sure that we're all good. There's nobody here that is going to be eventually uh, trying to bite me or take away my stuff, right? We thrive and survive. Constantly it's going on. And we conserve calories. So how we conserve calories, actually this is instinctively, is we're looking for stuff that is easier instead of more complicated which will explain why we don't like to go to the gym. We'd rather sit on the couch. We look to conserve calories because ultimately we are thinking, I am not 100% sure about the next meal. So I'm gonna to try to conserve. That is instinctively, by the way, you don't decide, you don't choose, you don't decide that this is happening in the background, right? And you're going to say like, Antoine, why are you talking about this with web design. Well, wait a minute, there's a whole bunch more slides and I'm going to explain to you how that works. So if you're looking at this website inside of that context, that this website makes no sense whatsoever. Because one of the first things it's asking me to do is it's asking me to think and I don't want to think. What I make with this website, what, I mean I don't even know what they, I don't even know what they want me to do. So I'm looking at some stuff and I'm like completely confused. I'm in a state of, I don't know how that this is helping me thrive and survive or in terms of conserving calories. Now I have to think what I'm looking at and that makes absolutely no sense. So that's not a good option. Or we have people that put this kind of stuff on their website. A beautiful mission statement. Let me read it to you. The mission of the Board of Pharmacy is to achieve the highest standards in the practice of pharmacy and to promote public health and safety. The Board of Pharmacy will... Are you sleeping already? This is awful. And this is why we get things like that. Like we're looking at this website, it's like what the heck is this stuff? That makes absolutely no sense. Nobody, and I mean nobody, read this crap. Your wife told you she read it and she didn't. She lied to you. She said, yeah, 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 I read it, good, good. By the way, there, there's a typo on, the, on one of the line. We'll educate, yeah. The Board of Pharmacy will educate it. Look, the third line. There's a typo in it. I'm not kidding, right? So like, this, is, this is crazy, so don't do that. This is completely insane. Nobody is going to read all that text. There is no way. This is way, you're asking me to burn so many calories here that I have no intention to burn for you. 
None whatsoever. I will not burn those calories. By the way, when I mean calories, you know actually you are burning calories when you're reading. Now it's going to give you hope. Oh, maybe I could cancel my gym, right? But you actually, if you think about it, if you sit at a computer and you actually type all day, and you think, like if you're writing a book, by the way, we have a gentleman, you're actually exhausted at the end of the day, and you haven't done anything, right? Right, you're exhausted, because you've burned calories all day long. Your brain burns an enormous amount of calories. So the second you're asking me to overthink, I'm like, I, I'm, I'm not down with it. I'm like, I'm, I'm moving on. Does that make sense? And basically, so what happens, what we do, is we daydream. We go in daydreaming. We're starting to look, we'll look at the beach. Oh wow, look at the beach. Yeah, I haven't gone on the beach in a long time. I wish I could I should talk to Colleen about taking the kids to the beach and everything. You know, it would be nice to put my feet in the sand. What do I need, by the way? I don't even know. What was I looking at? Okay, next. I was looking for a dentist. <laughs> right? We spend 30% of our time daydreaming. That's how much time we spend daydreaming. A third of our time is spent daydreaming. So the thing we have to do as a marketer is we have to stop people daydreaming. We have to get them to what they want and tell them exactly where they're going to get. Does that make sense? All right, the best, in pro the best products and services don't win. They don't. They really don't. We all know that. We've seen some products and services. We're like, I am better than this. How is it that they win and I don't? Because products and services that are communicated the clearest will win. See, it's not a design issue. It's a communication issue. We lose a lot of business because we can't communicate clearly. If we don't communicate clearly, we're going to lose a whole bunch of business. Like the people that are landing on this website and are looking at the sand and the beach and they have no clue what, what is going on. Especially in today's day and age, we're going to be looking at least at two or three websites. Guess where people are going to go? Not the one with the beach. So one of the things that we're going to be talking about is we're going to be talking about actually how to craft stories. Because this is what we need to do on our website to get people to take action. And we've been telling stories since the dawn of times. We love stories. There's nothing more than we love but stories. And we do, we've been doing this for the longest time. And every time there's someone that starts to tell a story, we are engaged. And I'm going to give you the recipe how you do that on the website. And even today, this is still the same type of storytelling. It's just it's a different medium. It's a different day and age. We're not afraid we're going to get eaten by a tiger. But it's the exact same thing. It's the exact same storytelling that we love. So there are seven elements of a story. The seven elements that you need to remember that your website needs to have, right? And the first one is it has a character. All stories have a character. And the character wants something. They want something. And a story starts when we define what the customer wants. There's a character and the character wants something. There's a character and the character wants white teeth. Right? Don't want to go to the beach. They want white, that's what, that's a possibility. I want whiter teeth. Or I want to stop my toothache. That's what I want. So we need to start to tell the story like this. One of the common mistakes is that we don't define the want. We actually do not define what the customer wants. Or, I see that often, is we have way too many wants. Like the customer wants this and that and this and that. It's just way, way too complicated. Again, we're talking about burning calories. So it has to be a single focus and a single word. White teeth. That make sense? So what we want, what we all want as human beings, all of us, or one of, we want one of those seven things. So here are the first three. We want to conserve resources. So all your, your customers are going to fall in one of those seven things. 
possibly two of them, maybe three, but that's going to be tough. But I will say the vast majority of them will be just one. So we want to conserve resources. What does that mean? That means we want to conserve what we have. I don't want to lose any, I don't want to lose that. I want to maintain my pool. I want to conserve my teeth. Does that make sense? I want to conserve what I have. Or I want to conserve time. You know, anything that's around wasting time. Right? Save me time. Pick up and delivery. I am saving you time. That is the thing that you want. Or I want to build social network. Build social network, this is what the digital uh, marketers of Palm Beach is about. We want to have more friends. We want more of you in the room. So that is what we want. We want also to save you time. So we're going to start on time, we're going to end on time. Now, we don't know that that's necessarily what you want, but that's one of the things we're going to promise. Right? Uh, the next four is gaining status. Everything around luxury. You know, if you look at all the luxury brand, all Lexus and, and BMW and Mercedes-Benz and Louis Vuitton, all these are about gaining status. Otherwise, there would be absolutely no reason why they charge $25,000 more for a Lexus than a Toyota. It's the ex exact same car. <laughs> There's no difference between a Lexus and a Toyota. It's the same car. But with one, you're gaining status. It's a status, right? Same thing with the iPhone, right? And the, why, why are people paying $1,000 for the, the, the new iPhone 10? Because it has a status. And for that status, they will pay $1,000. End of conversation. Accumulate resources. So obviously, I want more money, right? Everybody wants to grow their business. Everybody that wants more of, more of something that is, that is that section. Being generous, everything that's around philanthropy, people that are actually looking for people that want to be generous in the world. So that actually is one of the things that people want. They want to give back. Bill Gates, for example, has made billions of dollars, and now he's giving back. What he wants to do, he wants to be generous. Now, obviously, he's at a total different scale, but there's a lot of us that actually has that. We Maybe we want to give back to the environment. Maybe we want to give back to the school. We want to contribute in some fashion, right? You want to give back to your church, for example. Uh, and then the seventh one is desire for meaning, right? So your clients, every single one of your clients has one of those seven things, maybe two of them. So if you can identify that, now you actually know what they want. Character has a problem. So they want something, which is one of those seven things, and that character has a problem. And the problem is actually defined into three areas. It's an external problem, it's an internal problem, and it's a philosophical problem. Most people that actually identify a problem, most companies actually stay stuck in the external problem. Not the internal, not the philosophical problem. Let me explain. The external is just what's the problem? I want more leads. I want white teeth. I want my lawn to be taken care of. I want my lawn being cut. Right? The internal problem is, how does that make me feel? See, if I have white teeth, I have more pride. Right? If I have more leads, um, I feel happy. It's an internal, it's an internal desire. And the philosophical is, how is this just plain wrong as a problem? It shouldn't be like this. It's not fair. Things shouldn't be like that. The buy now button, whatever your direct call to action, is actually resolves all these problems. On the spot. The second they take action, it actually resolves those three problems. The external problem, the internal problem, and the philosophical problem. Companies sell solutions to external problems. That's what the vast majority of companies do. But we buy solutions to internal problems. 
We rarely buy it on external problem. It's the internal problem that actually has, uh, has us move. And we justify buying the thing for philosophical reason. This is why it's so important for you to know the uh, internal problem and the philosophical problem because this is where you get people to take action. You don't get people to take action on external problems. It's internal. It's how it feels. So for example, this is one of the beauties that all of us have seen. This is a fake website, by the way. I just made it this afternoon. Right? Affordable lawn care. Reliable and insured since 1985. Learn more. Who have seen this website at least a dozen times? Right? Like this is the, the classic thing. And this is everything that is wrong with this website. There is nothing in there that addresses the external, the internal, the philosophical problem. This website starts to address it. Because now we're not selling lawn care, we actually are selling be the envy of your neighborhood. Now we're addressing, yeah, he want a picture of it. You can take a picture of it. It's so simple yet, right? Who wants affordable lawn care? I had, nobody wants anything affordable. Explain the iPhone 10. It's, it's, there's, not, there's, not, there's nothing, it doesn't make sense. And look underneath there. It said, let's be honest. Lawn maintenance is hard work and time consuming. What did I just address there? The problems. And look at the call to action. Schedule a cut today. Let's go back to the next to the to the one right before that. Look at it now. Do you actually see the stupidity of it? And this is how I would say like 90% of the websites are. They design what they do and since how long they've been doing it and they're reliable. What else would you be? What else would you be? What what's the opposite of reliable? I mean it's like what do you mean, like, if it's a given, of course you're going to be reliable. And of course you're insured. And I don't care. You've been in business since 1985. I don't care. I really don't. It means nothing to me. You could have been an idiot since uh, 1985. It means absolutely nothing. That is how you do it. You address all the problems. And all of a sudden you're like, Jesus Christ, yes. Yeah, I do want to have the envy. Yeah, <laughs> hey, Joe, look at my lawn, man. Bring the wife and the kids. It's barbecue. Right? And yeah, it's hard work. It's time consuming. I'd rather watch the game than do this stuff. So the third thing you need for a story is you need a guide. And the guide is you. They're the hero. A lot of companies position themselves as the hero. Look at us. We're like so good. We've been here since 1985. We don't care. We don't care how long you've been doing that. And now you're reliable and insured. I don't care. I really could. Thank you. Good for you. You're a hero. I'm a hero. Let me find a guide. All the stories. All the stories have a guide. Right? Karate Kid. Mr. Miyagi. Right? Star Wars, Yoda, and you get so forth and so on. That's who you need to position yourself as the guide. And people don't care about your story. They really don't. They really don't. You care about your story. It moves you. When I started, I only had like 20 bucks in my pocket and my grandfather came across the pond and you know he started with nothing and blah, 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 blah. It's a great sappy story. Nobody cares. Don't. It's nice. Okay, good for you. But ultimately, yeah, you care when it's yours. It's your grandpa. You care about that. You know what I mean? You care about your parents, but the rest of us is like, well, I, I don't want to hear about your problem. I have my own. You know what I mean? People don't look for a hero. That's not what we look for. What we look for is a guide. 
We don't want a hero. We want a guide. With empathy. So a guide has empathy. I understand how you feel. Bill Clinton won an election like this. He did. I understand you. I feel your pain. Yeah. Nobody should have to. That's what a guide says. And a guide has authority. So how do you display authority on a website? With testimonial, award, certification, membership, clients. You know, this is how you display it. You don't put it like in their face immediately. That's actually, it comes later in the story. You know, first you have to display that you know what they want and you understand their internal, external, and philosophical problem and that you're going to be a guide, you have empathy. And then after you've decide, after you've actually made that point, then you can say, oh, by the way, I do have the authority to actually be your guide. Because I have worked with those clients, I have those certifications. Like, the mistake that people do is they have this stuff way too early. Way too early. They have header and boom, awards. I'm like, take it easy already. Like, I don't even know if I like you yet. Do you know what I mean? You have an established rapport with me. It's too soon. And a guy and a guide has a plan. That's what a guide has. And the plan is that's our that's the catapult methodology. The it's it's not that plan, but it's just it's the simplicity of it. It's simple. I want to know that you have a plan for me. You're going to take me to the promised land with something that is easy because I'm trying to conserve calorie and I don't care about your 12, 13, 17 step methodology and everything is one, two, three. Super simple. We strategize, we execute, we give you results. That's what we do. Trust me, we do a lot more than that. And so far right now, these people, they don't need to know that. Or, they, or do they care? They just want to know you're my guide, you have authority, and you have a plan. I'm starting to like you. I'm starting to be with you. People want a simple plan. It's got to be simple. The more complex it is, the least people will engage with you. The fifth thing you need in a story is you need a call to action. You need a good call to action. Obvious and specific. Let me say that again, obvious and specific. Obvious, it needs to pop out of the page. It needs to be there. Oh, yeah, right there. That's what you want me to do. When I ask my client that I says, what do you want people to do when they're ready to do business with you? And they're like, um, well, fill out a form. I'm like, no. When people are ready, I have a credit card. I am ready to give you money. What do they do first? And they say, well, we sit down and we strategize. Great, that is your call to action. Schedule a strategy session. That is the first thing, it needs to be super direct. That is, I want to get married with you. Let's get married, it's that direct. No, I don't want to date. No, I don't want to go in a restaurant. And speak. I want to get married, do you want to get married now? Now, you need to have a, why don't we date for a while as an option, because some people will say, well, I don't know if I'm ready to get married yet. I'd like to date for a little while, or I'd like to try, you know, like just test it out. But you gotta be super clear. Your objective is marriage. I wanna get married. I want your credit card, your payment, let's go. So, Call to actions like learn more, more information, and contact us is not the way to go. It sounds like I have some good stuff, but I don't really want to bother you. That is, that is just really like completely fluffy. That's not how you're going to get people to take action. So that's not good. What you want is you want schedule a cut today. That's what you want them to do. If you're a lawn care, schedule a cut today. Not tomorrow, not in a week, not when the weather clears. Schedule a cut today. Let's go. Make an appointment. That is a direct call to action and it's obvious. That's what I need to do. Or by now. 
register now. That's what you need to do in order to buy this. We get 3,000 messages a day in marketing. 3,000 a day. Yours needs to be clear and obvious. Because if you don't, it's going to be like wah, 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 wah. Learn more. I don't want to learn more. Who wants to learn more about anything? I don't have time. I have kids, I have a house, I have a wife, I have business, I have employees. I don't have time to learn more. I really don't. I already like I have three PDF on my desktop that I need to read that are like good stuff that I actually want to learn. The sixth thing in a story is success. You need to define what success looks like. You must define it. If you don't define what success looks like, then people are going to be left wondering that. And again, you don't want to have to burn calories wondering what the success is going to look like for me. This is how it's going to look like for you if you do that. And it's actually in four areas. The first one is financial. Emotional, physical, and spiritual. For some people, it's all four. For some others, it's just two. Uh, some people, it's just one. But it's going to be in one of those things where success is going to come up. You're going to have more money. You're going to be happier. You're going to feel better physically. And spiritually, you're going to feel more connected. Okay, got it. That is what I'm going to get. That is what success is going to look like. Now I get it. I totally get it. And the seventh part is you also need to tell them what failure looks like. That is the consequence if they don't buy your product. You need to raise the stakes. You need to let them know that. Because if you don't tell them, they might not necessarily know. You know it. But they might not know what is the impact of doing anything. So what failure will they avoid? You need to spell it out. If you hire me, this is what is not going to happen to you. So you could have, you could have a chart where you actually do a before and after. Before, what do they have? After, what do they have? Spell it out. Before, you had to do your own lawn and you wasted a whole bunch of time. After, you have peace of mind and freedom. What are they feeling? Overwhelmed. I have way too many things to do. And now, how, what am I feeling? I'm feeling happy. So you avoid feeling overwhelmed. And what is their status? Man, I'm like a best lawn in the neighborhood. I look like a million dollar. Before, I feel like a loser. You need to spell it out. You may not want to say you feel like a loser, but there is a way for you to express that. This is the thing that's going to happen. So when you are looking at a website, which you're going to do after this session, you're going to go back and you're going to look at your own websites. These are the seven questions you need to have an answer for. You need to look at it and you need to say, okay, let me answer those questions. The first question is, what do your customer want? Which is the three to five second rule. What do your customer want? They want to be the envy of the neighborhood. That is just as simple as that. The simplicity of it. The two is, what are your customer external, internal, and philosophical problems? What are they? You're looking at your website and needs to clearly say that. External, internal, I have obviously a loan that is not kept. Um, I'm spending a lot of time. Um, I actually probably don't feel proud because I, have, I want to be the envy of the neighborhood. Uh, and it's hard work. I've actually addressed all those in two sentences. Are we positioned as the guide or the hero? You look at your website. Are you the guide or are you the hero? Look at this. Is there anything, anything about the company there? It's 100% about them. Everything is about them. I'm the guide. You're the hero. You're going to be the envy of the neighborhood. 
you're not going to have to uh, work hard and you will have more free time. You. I'm just the guy that provides that. Schedule a cut today. Do we have a simple and basic plan to win the day on your website? So I created this one for this fake website. Basic. One, schedule. Two, relax. Three, enjoy. That's a basic plan. That is what's going to happen when you hire me. It's that simple. Nothing overly complicated. You can put a sentence below that if you want to as explanation, but I'm going to tell you that half the people will not read it. They'll get that. Okay, got it. So I schedule, I relax, and then I get to enjoy it. That's the deal. That's the plan. I'm down with that. Uh, are your call to actions clear and direct? Are they clear and direct? Like, are they like stating the obvious? So schedule a cut today. It's not schedule an appointment, right? Or call us. It's fuzzy. I don't want to call you. Do you know what I mean? I don't want to call you. What do I want to call you for? I don't like people. Most people, I don't like them, right? I mean, I just want to make sure you're not going to bite me or anything. Like, so I just, I talk to you, but you know what I mean? And we're all like that. I don't want to call you. What do I want to call you for? Oh, but I want to schedule a cut today. Yeah, I do. I want to do that. So I got to call it, which by the way, this button will go directly to a phone line, right? Um, have we helped the hero imagine how we can improve their life? Have we helped the hero imagine how we can improve their lives? Yeah. That'd be the envy of the neighborhood. That is major time, that's major improvement. Plus I'll get more time for myself. Okay, so I'm gonna be the envy which is philosophical and I'm gonna have more time, boom, boom. I'm like, yeah, you're making my life better. I know that now. And have we identified the consequences we are helping them avoid. That is the next session of the website. Don't let this be you. But that's not it. If you read the sentence, a simple sentence underneath, it says weeds attract insects and rodents that will decrease the value of your property. Right? We're just talking like directly, like they, oh, okay, got it. So we didn't say like, you know, we didn't like uh, go and fear mongering and put like rodents and insects and kind of like, you know, this is, you know, this is a pretty crappy lawn with all the weeds and whatnot. But we're basically saying in simple terms, like you have weeds, you're going to get insects, you're probably going to be, you're going to get rodents because they can hide in it and it will not be good for your property because if they're in your, if they're in your lawn, they get in the house and if they get in the house, it's not good. We've just addressed that right there. Everybody with me? All right, so it's a messaging problem. It's not a money problem. It's a messaging problem. I just, I'm giving you the recipe of it. Did you see the simplicity of this website? Can you actually see how simple and effective it is and how little would that cost to actually uh, put together? See, you don't have a money problem with your website. It's not that you're not short of $5,000 in hiring the next great designer that is going to nail it for you, or the, oh, the next coder, the next designer. If only you had $10,000, I could invest $10,000 in a great designer. That would be the day. That's not your problem. Your problem is a messaging problem. It's too complicated, and it's not clear enough. And you have all the answers, by the way. You may not, actually, you may not have all the answers. You may need to ask. You may need to ask some questions. Like, what do you guys want? What do you really want? What is the pain? What is the issue? What is the challenge that you have? And you need to dig. Sometimes you can do it on your own and ask people, or you can do it as a team effort and ask around, but that, that's really what you need to do. So, uh, you want to put also your website to what I call the grandma test. The grandma test is great. Who has a grandma? They can, I can rent you a grandma, by the way. I have an 81-year-old grandma. So we'll put the website to her. We're going to put the website right in front of her, and we're going to say, Grandma, can you tell me if you can easily answer those questions? What do I get? What do I get with this website? 
Five seconds. How does it make my life better? How does it make your life better, Grandma? Why do you get, how does it make your life better? And how do you get it, or how do you buy it? That's it. That is the grandma test. What do I get? I get to be the envy of the neighborhood. Oh, grandma gets that. She can see that. How does it make my life better? Well, I don't have to cut it. You do it for me. Now how do I buy it? Well, I order a cut today. I schedule a cut today. That's how I get it. It's just that simple and grandma got it. If grandma doesn't get it, if grandma is like, um, vacation on the beach, renting a condo, right? Go back to the drawing board. Because grandma is going to get the picture, but she's going to get the words. And the words got to speak to grandma and it's got to be super simple. So there's five key elements to a website and how you actually are going to lay it out. The first one is what's above the fold. So does everybody understands above the fold? You know, it used to be the newspaper when the newspaper, the newspaper is folded in half, is the real estate that's above the fold is basically is the most expensive real estate on newspaper. Because this is what people actually get to see just laid in front of them without opening the newspaper. So it's above the fold. So on a website is what you see before you scroll. Right? So above the fold. You know, it, it actually needs to communicate to people. It needs to say, you know, get in a college of your dreams. This is what you're going to get. Right? There's got to be a clear call to action, schedule a consultation, and then test prep and tutoring services to maximize your score. Everything that I see there, and I see people in the background, young college kids, I totally get it. It's not overly complicated. You should have seen what was on this website before. We literally fixed it in five minutes. Yeah, you know, it's basically they want to get in the college of their dreams, right? Or the parents want their kids to get in the college of their dreams. It has nothing to do with SAT, uh, ACT scores. I can tell you that none of it has to matter. Like, no, I, they don't really uh, care about that. Uh, this is a great website from CarMax. This is a billion dollar company. They're going to have a lot of money they can invest at. This is an expensive website, by the way. But experience clear and simple car buying and selling. Boom. Okay. It's clear and simple car buying and selling. So I can sell my car and I can buy a car and it's clear and it's simple. Got it. I can find my car, I can sell my car. Two buttons. Just as simple as it gets. Right? And this is my website uh, for public speaking. Get marketing advice that works. Give your audience effective strategies used by the best. Book Antoine now. Actually, what I see a lot of public speakers have is they have the word, it says speakers and entrepreneur. I swear to God, I, have, I don't know how many websites I've seen like a speaker and I'm like, why are you saying you're a speaker? It's like obvious you're a speaker. You're on stage speaking with a microphone. Of course you're a speaker. Why are you stating the obvious? This is the dumbest use of words. Don't state the obvious, like lawn care. What do I, of course you're lawn care. It's what you do. That's how I found you. Does that make sense? All right, clarity is the new creativity. Clarity, it's about being clear. Bring clarity on your website and you're going to see that people start buying your stuff. So you need to have a value prop on your website. The value prop is basically what they're going to get out of the experience. You know, this is the story brand workshop. This is what this presentation is based on. So you create a buzz, you learn language that sells, and you become a marketing master. That is the workshop for this of what we're talking about. This is what you're going to get. So that is the value proposition. So if I buy this, if I register now, I'm going to create a buzz, I'm going to learn language that sales, and I'm going to become a marketing master. And then above, there's Michael Hyatt, which is a known digital marketer. This is the best marketing innovation I've seen in years. Boom. Got it. Simple. 
It's not a lot of colors, there's not a lot of complicated images. There's three icons, three, three things, a testimonial above for authority. That's really all you need. But we come to just about everything. What's in it for me? Why do I care? Why, what am I going to get here? We don't so much care about your vision and your mission statement. Uh, you need to have an easy plan, right? The one, two, three. It's just super easy plan. It's not complicated. It's not a 12-step thing. It's not a, uh, a, a 17 methods and all kinds of bullets and, and all the things. Like I, I know I've seen that on websites. Like all the things you get, like bullets and bullets and bullets. Like on the right side, like a laundry list of bullets. It's just completely overwhelming. Strategy, execution, results. That's the methodology. And in the methodology, you have to overcome the resistance. See, people have a resistance to whatever you're selling. So your methodology, in essence, is actually addressing that resistance. So for people, with what I do, is what I do is complex and complicated. And it's going to require me to do a, a whole bunch of thinking and doing and whatnot, which is not really what I said in the, in the uh, methodology. Is strategy, execute, we produce results. That's what we do. Simple. Oh, it's that simple. Yeah, it's that simple. We, I have a 54 point checklist when I get a website. 54. 54 items we look on a website of things we're going to look. Meta description, uh, SEO, tags, uh, HTML, uh, I mean, all bunch of stuff. None of this is relevant to someone that wants to do business with me. They expect me to have that. My job is to tell them, you don't have to worry about that. We're going to do that. We have a plan. Of course we have a plan. They don't need to know the 54 up point. They really don't. If I tell them that, they're going to burn calories. They're going to be like, immediately they're going to be like, oh my God, how many of those points am I going to have to do? None. Why am I going to put that in a space? You need to have testimonials on your website. Now, one of the things I see with testimonials is that uh, sometimes there's just way too much of it. Way too many testimonials. Or there is a page with testimonials. Like, nobody goes to see your testimonials. Click on the page. The testimonials have to be within context of the page. Right? So, if right there on this page I'm selling widgets, the testimonial needs to be about how the widgets are great. Right? And not like a dozen of them. Two to four. That's really all I have space for. Like who knows, who knows that none of the uh, testimonials on the websites are objective? Everybody knows that. They're not objective. Who's going to put a bad testimonial on their website? Like are you out of your mind? Of course you're going to put a great testimonial. So that's not the point. It's not a review. A review is something different that they're going to look at. They're going to go to Facebook. They're going to go to Google Review. Let me find out about this guy. Like, any, what, what's the average star? Oh, 4.7 stars. Oh, okay, got it. That's good. How many reviews? 20. Okay. It's a good average, right? That's what we do. That's a review. But on your website, the testimonial needs to be a little bit different. So first of all, they need to be short and sweet. Nobody is going to read an entire paragraph of blah, 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 blah. And when I woke up in the morning, blah, 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 blah. None of this. No, nobody cares. What we want to know is, quickly, can I relate to those people? So you're looking at the people on the testimonial, and you're going to be looking for, you're going to be uh, people that are like me. Like, are these people like me? Right? Where are they from? What company are they with? Okay, I see Quinn, she's young, Krista, and I see, so okay, I got three women here, right, that have listened to, uh, to one of my speech. And I put a picture and there's a name and a company. So the entire purpose of those testimonials is to give you a sense of people like you, like me. Uh, so highlight a success or uh, show how someone overcame a resistance. Right, so someone had a success with your product or your services, highlight that specifically if it's a service page or overcome a resistance. I wasn't sure about going to the dentist because I was kind of like afraid of needles and all this thing, but he really made me comfortable and he put me out and I was stoned for three days. Right, okay, sign me up.
Uh, four testimonies at the most. Nobody is going to read like to 12 testimonies. Two to four is maximum. That's all you need. Um, and what is the most common resistance? You actually need to know that. Spend some time finding out what is the co most common resistance to what you sell, to your product and services. Because a lot of people have this question in the background. Will it work for me? I got it at work for you. But will it work for me? Your testimonials need to actually answer that question. Yes, it will work for you. Because people like you actually got it to work for them. Yeah, I got it, I got it, but my business is different. Will it work for me? Yes, it will work for you. Of course it will work for you. Work for anyone that has a credit card in a bank account. Um, number five is failure. The fear, of, uh, the fear of failure. So you need to have questions on your website and you need to address that. You need to address questions like, how much is your unclear message costing you? So your own version of that. Those questions are actually posted on the Story Brand website. But you can have your own version of those questions. How many customers can hear your offer? How many people are passing up your business? Right, you need to ask them questions about the fear of failure. So this entire presentation was actually based on the book called The Story Brand. I highly recommend that you, uh, you buy it. Uh, Don Miller is uh, the guy on the right. That's the guy that actually wrote this, uh, this book. He's actually a, a, a writer and a screenwriter. Um, he also has a workshop. Now I have no financial affiliation with this, okay? I'm not getting any, uh, any, feed, any uh, kickback or anything. I'm just letting you know because I think his methodology is extraordinary. It made a huge difference for me. So I think the least I can do is, first of all, uh, it's, it's his intellectual property, first of all. All this is his stuff. So I think the least I can do is send you his way and you can sign up for one of his workshops. They have online workshop, they have live uh, workshops, and then they also have other courses that you can buy. Um, you can go to the website, it's at storybrand.com. Now, for me, how I actually get paid to do uh, this, no, I don't get paid. Um, you can find me on YouTube, I have a, a channel with a little bit over 2,000 subscribers. And if you could find my channel on YouTube at Antoine Dupont Speaker and just click on subscribe, you'll get videos on you know, tips on how to make marketing work for you. So I would appreciate if you could do that. Uh, I'm also on Facebook if you prefer Facebook uh, and you can find me at, uh, at Antoine Dupont Speaker and that's my page and just click like. Again, I don't, you know, I don't sell things. Most of the stuff, 95% of the stuff I do is educational in nature and then once in a while I'll promote an event like this one. Um, and uh, you can also uh, recommend me to any event that would be looking for a marketing speaker since now you've seen me and you know that I don't drool. I do speak funny, I get it. I put the wrong, emphasis, uh, the wrong emphasis on the wrong syllable once in a while, but that's because I'm French and you're not. Um, and that's it. Thank you very much. Awesome.